So taking stock of what we've done so far, we've talked that we need WordPress to run on a database. That was what we did earlier. We installed it, and we've got WordPress, and now most of the time, 99% of the time, we'll be spending we'll be spending it here in the nice safe interface of the dashboard. We're not going to need to deal with that database just in the beginning like we did today. We're going to be clicking buttons and going to menus and all of that. We're going to get used to switching between the visit site, the front end, and the dashboard, the back end. We're going to get used to that. We're going to cover pretty much every single screen of WordPress, plugins, tips and tricks, advice. That's all of part one. Part two, we'll get more advanced, we'll get into e-commerce, we'll get into putting out the, the site on the real internet, all of that. It's a full process. So um, what I want to talk about here, uh, we've got this site set up, and on my handout I, I do have, um, handout three, I've got a section about practice. Let me skip this for the moment, but notice what the note says here. You want to read that and, and see that this is not a real site yet. It's not live. Only you can access it. Uh, this is our uh, local installation. It's a development environment. It's not live yet. Later on, it'll, it'll be on the server. It'll be production ready. It'll be ready for everyone to see and to start to buy. Because what would be bad is that as you're learning this, you've got a real site, you're adding products, and you've got these products to sell, but you haven't set up the, the credit card processing yet. People want to buy, but you don't have credit card processing. So we're going to spend most of our time in this development environment, and then eventually upload it to a real site. We'll cover that later. As for this practice stuff here, we'll get into details with this later, because what I want to do is I want to cover a few aspects of the WordPress dashboard that are valuable for us to know about. Uh, because there's a lot of settings, a lot of foundational settings for WordPress, and sometimes the defaults aren't the best. Uh, so I'm going to show you some settings that I think are more valuable, especially for an e-commerce site. So wherever you're at, make sure you go back to the dashboard. Remember, if you're visiting your site, just click back to dashboard. Hover your mouse over settings. You have all of these menu items. One of them at the very bottom is settings, and we have a bunch of different <coughs> settings that we can set. Let's go look at general settings. So under the settings menu, select general. In my case, um, if you're seeing something about this theme, recommends the following. Just ignore that. Some themes are built on other plugins and such. So if you see that, just don't worry about it. Uh, but what I'm seeing under general settings, here's the place where I need where I can change the, the name of my site. I can change the name of my site very easily whenever I want. So I'm calling it Victor's Bakery. You can call it whatever you want. I've got a spot for a tagline. And right now, the default, everyone's got a tagline, a slogan for your website called Just Another WordPress Site. And you're not. You are a brand new, interesting, cool website that is yours. So you have a spot here to write a tagline. I bring these two lines up here to touch on a little bit of SEO. Let me make some notes here. SEO. Search Engine Optimization. SEO. It's the art and the science and the magic of getting hits, getting traffic, getting views, getting uh, fame online. So uh, how you get views, traffic, sales, noticed, SEO. And I just saw the catalog um, Wednesday. Wednesday is the first day of the SEO class. Now my printout here tells me it's in room 209. <laughs> I have to check with the with the administrators. Just go off on a quick tangent here. The SEO class, Wednesday, the 15th, 209. Yeah, okay. So if you're coming to the SEO class, it should be right here. If you come back this Wednesday, it's day one of the SEO class, where we touch, where we get into much more detail 
of what I'm about to talk about. Same time, same room. But what I'm getting at is SEO is how to get views, traffic, and so forth. In a very small nutshell, SEO is about keywords. Obviously that's a two or three week class or whatever, we get into much more detail. But the concept is we need to think in terms of keywords in that when someone goes on Google or Bing or Yahoo or AOL or whatever to search or they ask Siri or they ask Google or they ask Cortana, they ask their, their phone, they're searching for something, obviously. And they're searching with keywords. I want to find a review of the Motorola Moto X. So I want to I want to learn about that. So I'm going to type into Google review of a Motorola Moto X. I'm typing in keywords. So if there's a website with those keywords, they could be found. Obviously if I'm telling you that, you know the secret. Well yeah, you and thousands of other people know the secret to SEO, keywords. So again, it's not that easy because lots of websites are going to make a website that has the keyword Motorola Moto E review and therefore lots of people could be competing with you to get found. So that's why SEO is a big topic. There's a lot of technical aspect to it. There's a little bit of luck to it. There's the algorithm. There's lots of stuff. So tangibly what we can do now, if we're thinking in terms of keywords, how are people searching? I've got a box, two boxes right here, where I could put keywords, site title and tagline. So let me start with tagline. Victor's Bakery. If someone is searching for a bakery, maybe what are they searching for? Cake. Cakes, donuts, Cake. maybe Cake. cupcakes, gluten-free, um, nut allergy, you know, all of these, all of these terms, keywords about cooking, baking, pastries, etc. I'm not saying and it also looks like it's saying here, but I'm not saying simply put keywords here. That's not what you do here. You put in a real sentence, a real human readable sentence with those keywords. So what about something like this? San Diego based bakery in the heart of East Lake, California. It's got the keyword there, bakery. San Diego, East Lake. People would be searching for those things. They would go on Google, they would go on Yahoo, and they would type San Diego Bakery. They would type in East Lake Bakery. They would type in East Lake Cakes. Okay, what if I type here, Victor's Bakery. Specializing in cakes. Specializing in gluten-free cakes. Blah, 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 blah. Keywords. This is part of the secret. This is the tip of the tip of the iceberg of SEO. Thinking in terms of what are people looking for. And if you take the SEO class, we go into much more detail, but I'll touch on those things throughout this class too. So for you, is your currently, if you've got an existent website, a website that exists, have you thought about this? Have you written a site title that is detailed? Have you written a tagline that is detailed? Have you written stuff on your home page with these keywords? Do you have an about page? You know, and all of these things that we would talk about in the SEO class. And you don't want to write an essay here. You don't want to write three sentences or a paragraph. One sentence, you're not going to be able to cover it all, and that's okay, because we're going to cover all of the other nuances throughout the whole site. So for mine, it's fine this way so far. Victor's Bakery, specializing in gluten-free cakes. San Diego-based bakery in the heart of East Lake, California. <clears throat> I would recommend that if what you're trying to say fits within this box, good. If you go further than that, you're perhaps writing too much because unfortunately you can over-optimize and that'll hurt you too. So there's lots of nuances to this. <coughs> but a meaningful sentence in each of these boxes will be one of the steps toward good SEO, search engine optimization. I'm going to make a note here and I'm going to have you write it down and write it down big with exclamation points. Don't touch these two things here unless you know what you're doing. 
WordPress address URL and site address. Do not change those unless you know what you're doing. I just had someone a few days ago, she's not in class today, is she? No. A few days ago, someone broke her site because she changed that address. It doesn't work anymore. Point. Period. Point blank. Full stop. It doesn't work because if you change that, you really mess up your database unless you know what you're doing. So don't change anything on these two boxes. Here's a spot where you can change your admin email. This is cool. Let people create memberships for my site. Right now it's off. But WordPress, with the click of a button, lets people subscribe to my site. Lets people contribute to my site. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm a blog website and I'm going to write articles, but I want other people to also write articles on my site. I, mean, I can approve them first, of course, but I can let other people be contributors. And all of these different levels, I forget the difference between each level, but they go in order of power. If you let people add an account as a subscriber, they can just basically view your site, get subscribed to it. Higher levels, they can edit the site. Highest level, they can add more people to the site and they can remove you as an administrator. So this, I bring this up here because this is how you get other people to help you edit your site. I'm running Victor's Bakery, but I'm also going to get Janet to help, and I'm also <laughs> going to get Bill to help. They're going to have their own logins, their own passwords and such. They can register to edit the site. And most of the time, the other people in your organization, you're going to give them editor access, the second highest one. That is, depending how much you trust them. Because if you give someone admin rights, they can kick you out of your site. And a lot of things, uh, not a lot, but sometimes what happens is people come to this class and they say, someone made my site, and when I log in to edit it, I can barely do anything. Well, it's because most likely they've set you to a lower level. You need to ask them, please set me as an editor or as an admin. But unfortunately, people come in here telling me all of these horror stories of, web de of these web designers. Our company is very open. We give the password back to the client. We give them all their materials. It's, we're totally open and transparent. But there's so many web designers out there that really lock you in. That you need to make a change? Tell us. Um, you, need to you need to update that picture? Tell us. Oh, you're thinking about moving away? Uh, we'll get back to you. you know, there's so many examples of that. People come in saying, I can't reach my web designer. I don't like that they're using Host Monster and I want to move it to Bluehost. And I can't get a hold of my web designer. That happens, unfortunately. There's not much recourse. You have to talk one on one for some better advice. But that's because of this. Who else are you letting have access to the site? I'm going to leave this off in my case. Time zone. Right now it's set to UTC 0. Where in the world is UTC 0? England, Greenwich, Greenwich Mean Time, London. We're not in London last time I checked. So um, what's our UTC offset? It depends on the time of the year. So we'll just set it as Los Angeles. There's a lot of cities here, so the trick is if you click the box and start typing LOS, it'll jump to Los Angeles. The point of this is that if you are going to add stuff to your site, do you want it to be set that you added it at 2 in the morning, which is London time, or do you want it to be set that you added it at 8 p.m.? You can change your date format if you'd like. Maybe you're dealing with a lot of international customers, and so there's different ways to write the date depending on the area of the world. Here it's set to, you know, standard U.S. method, so month, date, year. You can change your time format. Right now it's uh, here, uppercase, lowercase, 24-hour time, 12-hour time. When does your week start? You can change that. What's the language of your site? You can change that. So if you make any changes, remember to click Save at the bottom. Any questions on this page? All right, click Save. All the settings for writing are fine. We won't look at those. Those are also those are actually really good. Let's jump to beating. 
on the reading screen is one of the biggest secrets, one of the biggest questions that everyone asks about WordPress, every beginner. They say, but I thought WordPress was just for blogs. I want to make a website that is like a full-featured website. This is the screen where you set that. So let me show you the three styles of WordPress. This one is uh, this one is my personal one of my personal websites vmcampos.com slash blog. This is a WordPress site. It's about one of my hobbies. I like to read and collect comic books. And so I've got a website about that. And this is the classic WordPress style. It's a blog. I write an article and then that newer article pushes away the older, or pushes down the older article. That one pushed down the previous one. And then you can go to page two and whatever. This is the classic blog. Just a stream of articles. Um, that's the default of what we have with WordPress right now. The other side of the coin Here's one of our other clients. This is also a WordPress site. The other side of the coin is this static site. And yes, it's animating and all of that, but that's not what static means. Static means that on the home page, it doesn't have a blog that is pushing down the lower uh, articles. As a matter of fact, this site doesn't have any blog feature. This is still also a WordPress site. It does have an about page, and it has events, and all of that. And this can be done with WordPress as well. The third side of the coin, yes, there's a third side, it's, it's the edge, the edge of the coin. You have a Kiestex Coco. This would be a hybrid site, because it has a static home page in that, yes, this stuff can change and it's animated, but this this, these like call to actions and stuff here, these don't change that often. It's being advertised over and over. Watch us on Cooking Channel, watch us on Travel Channel. And it's got events and such. But this stuff doesn't change too often. This is still static. But and notice it still has the blog right there. And if there's a new blog article, it pushes down the old ones. This one's hybrid. So, what's that? Uh, well, it's just probably some animation somewhere. Uh, so, uh, three styles of WordPress sites. We have classic blog. We have a static site. We have hybrid site. Latest Articles, push down older ones on the home page. Static, which is can have animation. So um, no, no blogs push down on the home page. And hybrid is a mixture of the two. Mixes static and, and uh, blog, classic blog. So my comic blog is, my comic site is classic blog. The Italian food place is static site. And the Mexican food place is hybrid. You can do all those three with WordPress on this screen right here. the screen right here. What does your front page display? Your latest posts? That's default. So my latest articles are going to take over the home page and push down. Well, if instead I want a static home page, I can select that. We can't do it yet because then you have to set placeholders. Okay, if you set it to a static page, what's the thing you're going to show on the front page? Well, I don't have a home page yet. I have a sample page home page, but I don't have a, I mean, I have a, I have a sample page, but I don't have a home page. And then where would you like to put your posts? If you're going to write articles and be hybrid, where are you going to write your articles? Where are they going to be stored? 
Well, we don't have a blog placeholder page. We haven't talked about creating pages and posts yet. That'll be next time. But this is the screen where we set it as either blog, either static, and then I have to set a home page, or hybrid, and then I have to further set a blog page. So we'll get back to this later once we learn more of this, but here's the screen. And you want to leave it as latest post at the moment or else your site won't quite work. So let's leave it latest. Uh, don't worry about these other settings just yet. We'll talk about those in detail later. And look at that. There's that button right there that we set when we first set up the site. Eventually, when we put our site live on the internet, if we don't turn this off, this could be a big handicap that we don't get found by the search engines. We told the search engines ignore us. We turned it off here on purpose because it's not a real site. But eventually when we go live, we have to remember to come back here and turn that off. I didn't really change anything here, so I won't click save, but any questions here? If I skipped it, we'll talk about it in detail later. Any questions so far? Let's take a brief look then at the settings for discussion. These settings are fine, but let me point out a couple of things here. Part of the secret of SEO that the search engines look at is how popular is your site? And that's almost like a catch-22. To get popular on the search engines, well, you just need to be popular. But I need to be popular to be popular on the search engine. So the search engines look at a lot of factors to see how popular you are and how well to rank you. One of them is, do other websites link to your website? So those are known as backlinks. I'm going to say up here, do you have backlinks? Those are also known as, aka, also known as inbound links, incoming links, just links to your site. If some other website links to my site, that's good. If 10 other websites link to my site, that's gooder. But the problem is, what if a spam website links to my site? What if 10 spam websites link to my site? That's not good. The search engines look at that. And unfortunately, the search engines are very strict nowadays because there's so much spam. So if you've got a lot of spam sites linking to your site, the search engine will think you're a spam site. And that's why you're not going to rank higher on the results. Because, you know, if, uh, if it uh, walks like a duck and, and talks like a duck, it's a spam duck. So we'll deal with all of that in the SEO class. Uh, what we're looking at on this screen here is this is how you start to build backlinks right here. Attempt to notify any blogs linked to from the article. The other class we go into it in detail. But if you link your site first to another site and we activate this, our site will tell their site, hey, we exist hey, check us out. And that other site, web designer might never know that and not do anything, or they may know what they're doing and link back to your site. There's a whole bunch of nuances to that to talk about in the other class, but I recommend at least turn this on because this will help you get known by other sites. When those other sites link to you, Bing will see that, Yahoo will see that, Google will see that, and that'll help you rank higher. This third button here, again, if I don't mention it, it's fine, or I'll talk about it later. But the third item here, allow people to post comments. With a click of a button, I can make it very easy for people to comment on my site. In the old days, it was very difficult to do that. In the old days of web design, if a client wanted people to comment on their site, it was very difficult. A lot of programming. With a click of a button, we can turn it on or off in WordPress. But it says, allow people to post on new articles. This doesn't go back and turn off commentability on something you've already created. This is only for future posts. 
but you can set it for individual articles on a screen we'll see later. And having the ability for people to comment on your site has some SEO value. I think nowadays it has less importance, but it's still good to mention here. If people can comment on your site, it may help SEO. It may help your rankings. May help because if you let any crazy person write any crazy thing on your site, or any spammer write spam links on your site, that's not going to help you. The search engines are going to see, why is there so much spam content on this website? It must be spam. And therefore, you're not going to rank well. So it may help you. If then you further activate the option further down here, before a comment appears, comment must be manually approved. So if you're going to let people comment on your site, which is this top button here, you then should activate comment must be manually approved. This is comment moderation. This is any crazy person can write any crazy thing. But then you'll get an email that says there's a new comment. A little preview of the comment and then right from the email you can click approve, deny, spam. And if it's a good on-topic comment, you can click approve, it shows up, search engines see that, you may rank better. If it's a if it's an off-topic comment, if it's, you know, spiteful or mean or whatever, you say, I don't want to show that, you can just click deny, and it doesn't show up. Or if it's spam, you can click spam, and it'll disappear, and that will never come back. How does that work with the one below it? Okay, on this one, um, I usually like to flip these, because this one's off and this one's on. This one is saying that first someone must comment and it must be approved because there's an internal comment, there's an internal automatic allowance which I don't like, I think it, it might not be as accurate. So if we leave that one on and someone comments, they can then further comment easier in the future. But spammers are getting so good at this, they can, now they create one spam comment that sounds legitimate. There's so many comments that I see that now that they say, I found your site and it's great, I really like it. Well that applies to any website. It's not specific at all. And then I fell for it and I approved that comment and now I, I open the door for them to then write 20 spam comments. So I recommend you flip these around. You have to manually approve all of them all. Yes, it's more work, but it's more secure. It's better in the long term. Uh, you might have approved two comments that seem on topic. I don't doubt that these spammers are getting smarter and more insidious, and then they're going to write two or three positive comments, and then after they've gotten in the front door, then they're going to write 40 spam comments and your site's going to suffer for it. What else? Everything else here you can look at on your own. Pretty self-explanatory. All the defaults are fine. I made a couple changes. Allow posts on new articles and then allow manually approved and turn off previously approved. At the very bottom click save. Well, worse than that, it's usually companies that don't, that don't have anything to do with yours. And I'm a bakery, but then someone is putting comments about, about their genuine, authentic watches, or their affordable medicines, and all of that. It doesn't have anything to do with bakeries, so that would be spam comments. Too many of those, and that could hurt your SEO rankings. We're going to skip media. That one's pretty self-explanatory. We might touch it later, but let's jump over to permalinks. Permalinks is another term for your web addresses. Oftentimes the default structure of your addresses is plain. Mine is set to custom, but let me explain these. Um, the default is that let's say I've got victor.com and WordPress will make my links 
plain. So let's say I've got victor.com and I've got a I've got a shop page and WordPress calls it um, question p equals 23. Page 23 is my shop page. Um, this is terrible for SEO. What if you had victor.com slash shop? That is excellent for SEO. Having real words in your address, web addresses, is much better than having numbers. The numbers have no meaning to the search engines. That number has a meaning in the database, but to Google or to Bing or to Yahoo, etc., it's worthless. It has no meaning. Simply having something like that, or you know, if you were doing it in the classic way like .html, that's fine. Um, meaningful words, that's much better. And that's how you, and the place you set that is right here. So if you've got a website on WordPress that already exists and you look into this screen here and you're setting the older version, I think it called it default. I think the new version of WordPress calls it plain. But if you've got this structure where your addresses are numbers, that could be a big reason why you're not getting traffic to your site. The search engines look at that as well. Anyone, any other one here is going to be better, uh, except the other numeric one right here. Day and name is good, month and name is good, and post name is good. These are way better than plain or numeric, because numeric, again, is just numbers. The numbers are not meaningful to the search engines. The real words are, because when someone searches the keyword uh, pecan pie recipe, what if I create a page called pecan pie recipe? Search engines look at that, everything about your site. And if that pecan pie recipe, recipe is simply called 123.html, worthless. But if it's called pecan pie.html, worthful. Yes? What if it's a composite? Let's say pecan pie recipe, post number 33. That's, that's good. That's, that's way better. Because you are using the keywords. Look at these other structures. They're putting the year and the date. Numbers, but then still words. So if you have it a composite, that's fine. But notice also these are divided by dashes. So make sure you've got your words divided with some sort of symbol, often with dashes. So if it is pecan-pi-112, fine, because you've got pecan and pi. And you can set that in your custom structure. Mine disappeared. But we had custom structure, I think, and I think that one's set fine. What, what, we, what we don't want to do at the moment is change this yet. I'll talk about this a little bit later because there's, I think there's a bug in WAMP server that if we change it to something else, the links might break. So don't worry about changing it yet. But if you've got your own website on Bluehost or GoDaddy or whatever, you should be okay changing it. But I still wouldn't until we talk about it in more detail. But this is something we'll get back to. We do want, these are known as pretty links uh, because they have real words that people and the search engines can find. So we'll say set your permalinks, which are your URLs, your addresses, to pretty links. Oftentimes for clients, we do post name. such as postname. Don't change it just yet, like I said. Uh, it won't quite work, but for future reference, we'll put postname in, in, in the future. Anything besides plain or numeric. So don't change it? Not yet. Um, we have this bug in WAMP server that, we'll, that we need to deal with later. If we're running MAMP, there's no problem. You can change it on if you're using MAMP. But on WAMP, we have one more little thing to change. In this optional stuff, don't worry about it. It's optional and advanced. So I'm not changing anything here. We'll do it later.
We're going to wrap up the main lecture in just a little bit. I'll take some final questions. Um, we'll do a little wrap up and then a little lab time in case people need a little one-on-one -on -one help and such. Any questions about anything we've talked about so far? This site that we're creating right now, when we come back next time, we're going to create it again. We're going to create the database again and install WordPress again and then get up and running. We're not going to do that every single time, however. I don't want to start over every time. I don't want to lose all my work. We will lose our work. These computers, this whole time that we've been here, there's been a little polar bear staring at you. In the bottom right corner, it's a little polar bear. That's our deep freeze software, which means our computers have a protection. As soon as you restart the computer, everything you did here erases. So if you forgot to log out, good, it logged me out. If you, uh, you know, left personal information on the desktop, it'll go away. On the flip side, anything that you save to our desktop, any notes, uh, this site is going to go away when we restart. And we cannot, at the moment, simply drag our site to our flash drive. It won't work. It won't be complete. If we just drag it to our, to our drive, we're going to miss the database and other pieces. Next time, I'm going to have a handout that'll give you to make a backup of the site to take with us. And then after that, then we'll, then we'll bring the site back to life every time we come back or we don't have to start over again. But the first two times we will, just to get used to that process. We'll start over. We'll do the step two again next time and I would recommend try to, try to look at steps one, two, and three, sheets one, two, and three at home. We'll, we'll do step two and three next time. When we, when we start again on Monday. 6 p.m. So uh, again, I'm recording all of this. So I'm going to upload it uh, at the at the end of the day. Send me an email. I'll send you the links to the videos, and you can watch them at your leisure. That's it for the moment, and we'll do it again next time.